Okay, so now let's go to risk management. Let me just check in the comments here. Uh, Jan says Matic is still undervalued. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, yeah, th thank you, uh, Ibidiran. Uh, he's saying respect for the house. Yes, so thanks to Matic and Helium and just crypto in general, I was able to help buy my parents a house, right? Their, their dream home, which is was no easy feat. It was over a million dollars. <laughs> but crypto, generation of wealth, right? That's what it's about. Okay, all right. So definitely go buy the book or get the free book on the on the uh, on the site, the ebook, get the audiobook as well, leave a review, tell us what you think. All right, so now risk management. All right, so this is a pretty technical chapter. I'm just gonna to try to simplify this from my perspective and go through how I view risk. All right, how I view risk. Okay. Uh, sorry, Jan says got into Matic at one sense. That's what's up, as we as we say. We just landed on the moon in the Lambo. Okay, all right. So risk. Oh man, risk. Risk is how people get wrecked in crypto, right? I mean, the biggest L in crypto happens to people who have poor risk management. You can have the best research in the world, tokenmetrics.com, or our channel on YouTube, but if you don't know how to manage your risk, you will get wrecked. Because, I mean, the first rule about investing, as Warren Buffett says, is not to lose money. right? But in crypto, it happens all the time. People lose money. But you have to live to fight another day. How do you manage risk? I mean, there are different ways you can manage risk. But for me, I basically, I view my portfolio like this, right? I like to I think to have a fully diversified portfolio, right? The, f the first element of risk is di diversify. Right? Don't only invest in one thing. You might have different things you, you have invested in that are uncorrelated, ideally. But prior to get, getting to all that, let's just say, what is the ideal threshold, right? So from doing lots of, there's lots of research on data on this, right? The good range in terms of stocks, I mean, the good range for quantity of stocks to hold is 10 to 30 stocks, right? You want to have ideally more than 10 stocks in your portfolio and ideally less than 30, otherwise you're becoming just a market index fund, essentially, right? So taking that same theory and applying it to crypto, we have the same concept. I think as an investor, you should hold more than one asset, right? Unless you're super bullish and you've done the research and even then, I'll still, I'll, I'll still diversify with, with a few other investments, right? But for me, the range is to have minimum 10 crypto investments in different cryptocurrencies and maximum 30. But 30 to me is way too much because you have to know what you're investing in, at least at, at a high level, but ideally on a deep level, right? And if you have 30 investments, you're just basically just, you're just gambling essentially, right? Because the real home runs, they happen with strategy and think of yourself as a sniper, not just as a, sh don't shoot and spray. You want, you want to snipe and find the opportunity for investing. Right, so let's pick a, a middle ground and say 20. Right, so let's say you should have max 20 cryptocurrencies in your portfolio. And by the way, all this is not financial advice, guys. <laughs> this goes without saying, right? All this is not financial advice, do your own research, <laughs> but anyway. So, I think 20 is a good range in a bull market, maybe 30 is the max, but that's pushing it. But in a bear market, I probably bring it down to 10. But anyway, let's say 20 investments. Let's say you have $10,000 in crypto. I mean, but you, you have to invest in crypto. How would I invest that money? I would say, okay, if we're doing 20 investments, that's 5% in each cryptocurrency, right? That's a reasonable approach. That could work. And I think if anything, that's a, de that's a decent approach, right? Because most people I've seen who, who lose money in crypto, they're gambling, even though they have, because the thing about, about this, right? Investing in crypto is still volatile, it's still risky. And even the best investors take L's, they lose money. I mean, think of this, when it comes from venture capital, a good VC, a great VC in venture capital has a success rate of 
about 10%, maybe 15, 20% if they're lucky. Right? Basically, for every 10 investments, they anticipate that they will lose money on eight of them and one or two investments will return the whole fund and then some. Right? What does that mean? That means that all the top VCs like Anderson Horowitz, A16Z, all the other VCs, if they make 10 investments, they don't expect every investment to be an Uber or an Airbnb or an Amazon or Google or Facebook. They expect that for every 10 investments, only one of them will be an Uber or Airbnb. And the rest will just either not make money or be neutral or flat, no exit. But the return of those top one or two investments will probably 10x the fund, right? So let's say you have $10,000, right? Don't view it as you're trying to get a 10x on every single investment. Although that is a goal, right? Despite all the research we do, all the framework we have, we'll still know that there'll be L's, right? Armor Finance, for example, and others. But the best investments, those that end up being home runs, the Matic networks, the Helium networks, right? They they deliver so much money, you, you don't even think about your L's. So in essence, you want to divide your portfolio. In this case, let's say, 10 to 20 crypto assets, and then pick a percentage you won't go over, and then use that, right? So in, in my case, my portfolio, beginning of the year was essentially, I was trying to get up to 20 coins, and the most I would put into any coin, especially those that were low cap, was 5% of my portfolio, right? So in that case, in the, in the case of having $10,000, that would be $500 into, into any crypto asset. But you can shift the percentages and have a different factor for weighing that. So in our, in our case, we use the TM grade, right? But at the same time, you want to make sure what you're investing has no correlation. Uh, so let me pick, let me pull up our indices here. I think this is a good segue to help understand risk. Right? So give me one second here. All right, so at a high level, for those who are new, uh, token metrics, we take our ratings. So basically using our, our AI, we go through and we rate crypto assets. We have over 3,000 crypto assets. We take those ratings and then we build a portfolio that tries to diversify those holdings, right? And minimum is about five coins. Some have up to 10, right? In this case, the Qcoin index is the best performing one. But why, why not just have an index or a pie chart with all tokens that have the best rating? Because correlation. Correlation is a risk that you have to factor into your portfolio. Right? Ideally, you want to have a portfolio where if one asset goes down, you don't want the whole portfolio to go down. Because that means there is no upside in having assets or holdings in your portfolio that go that move the same then because basically you're basically, you're basically holding the same thing right so for example if we go to ethereum and we go to the correlation tab for ethereum right so if you have ethereum these other crypto assets have the same correlation as ethereum so we have c ethereum which is basically compound ethereum on com compound Stake Ethereum, obviously, that has correlation. But guess what? Binance Coin, BNB, FTX, Stacks, and Cardano, and Elrond. Right, so think about this, right? If you have a portfolio, it makes no sense if you have 10 coins or 20 coins to have both Ethereum and Binance and FTX or FTX or Waves or Stacks or Cardano because... I mean, the exchange coin makes sense, right? If Ethereum is doing well, people are trading DeFi and all that, exchanges will do well as well, right? So for every holding you have, you want to have holdings that move the opposite. It sounds kind of funny about it, right? But it makes sense because when Ethereum goes down, all the exchange coins will likely go down, right? Because correlation is a scale of minus one to positive one and zero, zero being neutral. Negative one meaning negatively correlated, meaning that when it goes up, it goes down, and vice versa. 
and high, a positive one means it's highly correlated, meaning that when Ethereum goes up, Binance goes up, FTX goes, goes up, right? Why does that matter? Because if the whole market goes down and you have all these coins in your portfolio, your whole portfolio goes down. But you can hedge that. Now we're getting towards hedging. Hedging means basically trying to have a backup plan, an option, insurance. So in this case, lowest correlation you have here, crypto.com, negative 0.28. This is top 100 market cap, right? And you have the graph, right? So a portfolio that has Ethereum and Cardano, in this case, if the whole market goes down, your whole, your whole portfolio goes down, right? But if you have, let's say, Ethereum and the graph or crypto.com, for example, right? If, the, if Ethereum goes down, crypto.com actually will go up or is more likely, more likely, likely to go up, helping boost your portfolio. So by managing risk, you are essentially looking to hedge, right? So if you have assets in your portfolio, you want assets that all don't move together, right? So for example, uh, Helium, let's go to Helium Network. While Helium has been such a great investment, it's not really been correlated with the market too much, right? Looking at this, okay, maybe it has, uh, has this changed? Yeah, so it looks like this has changed. But back, I would say last year, Helium was acting almost like a stable coin. When the market would go down, I think ever since they, they, they did the halving with, with staking and mining, this has changed. But in the past, when the market would go down, Helium would basically just not go down because people were printing money mining helium at one point i was making six grand a month mining helium so why would i sell it during a market crash right so finding these assets that move in opposite ways helps remove the risk right so ideally when you have a portfolio you want the correlation of your total portfolio to add up to zero right that's typical uh finance what, what, what does that mean so if you take all the all the assets in your portfolio and their correlation, ideally it should add up to zero, right? So in this case, you take 0.96 and all this, and ideally you want to have other assets that balance it out and it goes down to zero. When it goes to zero, you basically have a market neutral portfolio, meaning that a portfolio that is not impacted by the market, bull or bear market. It basically just, it will just do well regardless, right? It's basically an all weather portfolio. That's a common phrase by Ray Dalio, right? an all-weather portfolio. Now, when it comes to risk in crypto, there are so many elements of risk. You can do all the best research in the world and still get wrecked, right? So at a high level, if I go back, so how do I go about finding a cryptocurrency to invest in, right? We talk about value investing, right? But now let's manage the risk, right? So let's say, I wanted to buy Helium back then when it launched. How would I go about it, right? I managed the risk by buying a hotspot that cost 400 bucks, didn't lose too much money on that. And then when I was buying it, I was buying it at a low valuation, right? So when you buy something that's undervalued, that has a good ch chance to do a 10X, you're, you're managing the risk. And then when I bought it, I didn't go in and buy half my, 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 my portfolio with HNT or Helium, that's how you get wrecked. Because even the best research, mistakes happen, right? Because going back to the premise that despite having the best research, only one out of 10, basically 10% or less of your investments will actually be home runs, you still want to have margin for error, right? And you do that by managing the risk. So for me, if something is a new asset, in that example, I will not invest more than 5% of my portfolio into that asset class. It's 5% or less. But as it starts to prove itself, then you can double it down. Not financial advice. <laughs> so for example, with Polygon, I double it down, right? And with Helium, I double it down, right? I bought Helium at like around 10, 15 cents, 
bought some more at around a dollar something, bought some more at 10 bucks, I believe, right? Because success begets success. As a project proves itself that it's winning, as your thesis proves itself, you get even more confident and you want to double down on that. That's what I've learned this bull market cycle that I didn't learn last market cycle. And that's a pretty, I think that's pretty groundbreaking actually, right? Because when something is winning, you want to hunker down, build a fort, you know, start renting it out. <laughs> I mean, you want to bunker down and go in for the long haul. Because if your thesis was right and it's playing out, you don't want to start taking profits too early. And I think that's what I learned this market cycle. But anyway, the other element I want to cover is liquidity risk. You can have the best investment, but how, you, how do you avoid getting rug pulled? Right? Rug pull in, in crypto happens when something looks great. For example, uh, Squid Game, right? Squid Game token that had that rug pull. Was this the one? It basically had a flash crash that went to zero. Yeah, that's right. There are reports of rug pull in this project and mainstream media. Please proceed with caution. <laughs> right? All right. So let's see what happened here. I'm not seeing the rug pull here, though. Okay, I guess, was it here? It went here and went to... But anyway, a rug pull is basically a project that is a pump and dump, right? They pump it, then it dumps, right? And in, in all markets for investing, especially in crypto, uh, tokens go up in an escalator, and they come down in an elevator. That's something you should definitely recall uh, when it comes to... To investing in general, right? The faster they go up, they'll fall 10 times even faster, right? Because once you get that as an investor, you will get why you have to manage your risk. Because something could go up, something can take, let's say, 10 months to go up to do a 10x, right? Then go to then lose most of the value in a tenth the time. Right? So basically in, in a month. So it will, it will take 10 months to go up, then a month it just crashes, right? Once you manage that, you will know why you have to manage the risk so much in crypto. Best case, the best time to invest in crypto was during the pandemic, when Donald Trump announced that US was closing down its borders. I mean, I recall this day so vividly. I was up late at night as usual, went to sleep around 3, 4 a.m. Yeah, probably around 3 a.m. after doing some crypto and stuff. I woke up, I kid you not, around 10, 11 a.m., the whole market had dropped 40% in less than half a day, in less than 12 hours. I mean, there was blood in the streets. It looked like a freaking crusade. I mean, the portfolio, block flow was just bleeding. Right? So basically, between falling asleep and waking up, when the music stopped playing, the whole market had dropped 40%. All, Bitcoin dropped like 30%, altcoins dropped 40% or more in less than 12 hours. That happens in crypto. Across the board, not just shit, not just shit coins, I mean, even great projects, like, like creme de la creme projects were losing 30 to 40% of their value in less than 12 hours. Because people were on a flight to liquidity. People didn't want to be in the market if we're entering this, pandem this lockdown, essentially, right? So how do you prevent that from happening? One, you diversify your portfolio. Don't put too much into every asset class, unless that asset is something that is super solid, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. I think those are the ones where you can make an exception, right? For example, like I won't point ahead about a quarter of my portfolio in Ethereum, right? Because Ethereum is not just a regular altcoin, right? And for me, there's more upside in that than, than Bitcoin. But liquidity risk, right? How do you handle that? So I take any crypto asset, and I look at the trading volume. Let's, let's not use this, this pump and dump. Let's use a different coin. So let's say RMRK was a project we've covered that did well on quarter views and was part of our altcoin quarterly report. Right? So let's say I want, I want to invest into RMRK. Right? So its market cap is $375 million. Trading volume slightly under 6 million, All right? So basically, I would just take these two numbers, 
if I can copy and paste here. And it's really this simple. And I would divide this by the market cap. Right, and that would just times by 100. I'm doing this on the search bar. Why isn't this? Yeah, so basically 1.58% of the market cap is being traded every single day. What does that tell you? This tells me this is very illiquid coin. And when you're investing into something, you want to make sure you're investing into something that has liquidity. Because you always want to have the premise that the music can stop playing anytime in crypto, regardless of what asset you have. And it doesn't matter whether Bitcoin, Ethereum, Crypto or Creme, or Shitcoin, they can drop 40% or more in less than 12 hours. So when that happens, you have to be able to get out very quickly. Right, so my general rule of thumb is I like to have I like to invest into projects where at least 10% of the market cap is being traded every single day. Right? I that's that's in an ideal world, right? And ideally, not more than 50% of the market cap should be traded every single day. Why does that matter? Right? If you have a project where more than 50% of the market cap is being traded that means you have lots of turnover right so this is actually the case with bitcoin i believe that means you have lots of traders lots of short-term holders right? people who are holding it don't believe in the long-term value of that i mean they could but they're just traders right so in this case like in bitcoin not so much i think they cleaned up the, the watch trading but basically you want to avoid coins that are being watch traded or coins that have traders in them. Because if, if people who are in that asset are trading it, guess what? When the music stops, traders will get out and there's no there's no liquidity in them. Right? So my sweet spot is 10 to 50 percent, five zero of the of the liquidity. Right? Now this is not necessarily a bad thing, right? The, so in this case, remark R M R K. Right? This tells me that there aren't too many traders in this coin. If anything, it could be a good thing, depending on how risky you are, that people in this coin are long-term value investors, right? And they aren't selling much, right? But it could also be, yeah, because looking at this, circulating supply is 9.5 million. Total supply is 10 million. So 95% of the coin is circulating, right? Looking at this, Market cap and FTV, fully diluted valuation. So there isn't going to be too much inflation or, or too many new coins introduced into the supply. So that's actually very interesting, right? Then we go to the markets. And now I, I see why there isn't too much being traded. There aren't that many exchanges. There's only Gate.io and Qcoin. So if anything now, this tells me, okay, there aren't too many traders in this coin. There won't be too much inflation in this coin. So the valuation is, is pretty much the valuation right now. Plus, if a new bigger exchange like Binance or Coinbase adds this, this can do pretty well, especially if this did a quarter view. So although this has a low trading volume, this would tell me this is actually a good long-term hold without looking into all the, all the other technicals, right? Okay, but now how do I look at the actual entry point? The actual entry point is, the other gener general rule I have is, you take the trading volume, this is if you're a whale, and ideally you want to, ha whatever you buy should be 5 to 10% of the daily trading volume, the 24-hour trading volume. All right, so we take the same number, multiply by 0.10, So let's say I'm a billionaire or whatever, right? And you're trying to buy on exchanges. Not the best thing to do, but let's say you wanted to do that, right? You, looking at this trading volume, I would not buy more than 
$595,000 worth. Ideally, I would buy even less than that, right? But this is basically the max threshold, right? Otherwise, you, you'd, you'd have lots of slippage. Um, if we go back here, but let's say you wanted to do 0 0.05. Basically, you would not buy more than $297,000 worth. That's one way I would go about doing that, right? So basically, we're looking at the market cap, the circulating supply, the trading volume, and all that helps us figure out how much money to put in, all right? So let me see if I can get a different coin that's a lot less liquid. Uh, let me see what's... So if we go to homepage here, let me actually... Okay, so for example, let's look at one of the indices, right? So we have the Keycoin Daily Index. We have Chronotech. If we open this up here with tokenmetrics, market cap 134 million, trading volume 1.49 million, right? Same thing, right? I'll just take that times 0 0.05 to be safe. If you're a real risk, risk taker, I like, for example, with Helium Network, when it launched, the only exchange was some small, small crappy exchange. And I was so bullish on Helium that I was willing to do 10%. And that's how I sized my trades, right? So in this case, let's say as, as bullish as Helium, you would do $149,000 per trade. Now, the other alternative is to just buy this OTC over, over the, the counter. This is harder to do. Um, the best OTC desks are typically at big exchanges. So Kraken is known for having a good OTC desk. Uh, Coinbase has them. I think those it's typically for institutional investors. Uh, Helium Network had a telegram group by just some random people that put, to, put it together. I mean, with stuff like that, you want to be very careful with buying OTC. Typically, it's better to do it through a well-known entity like, a, like, like an a exchange. But that's how I would size my trade. So what is, why is this valuable, right? Because it doesn't, the, the issue isn't how much money you have, it's how much you can get out. That's why I've rarely been rug pulled, right? Because every entry is calculated and even the exit, at least, at least for liquidity, is calculated, right? So in this case, we know, okay, let, let's say I'm not as bullish on this as Helium. I would only put in 5% of the daily trading volume. That way, if there's a, a squeeze, or there's a run to liquidity, I can get out easily. Not perfectly, but not as much as somebody who comes in here and buys the whole trading volume, right? Because this will affect the price, either upwards or downwards, if you buy or sell. But in essence, that's risk management. 